What's going on guys and welcome back to Critical Crypto where we're going to talk about cryptocurrency that I'm excited about based on price and real world utility. And last month I made a video about why I'm mining Ravencoin and since then I've stacked about 8,000 Ravencoin and I've added a second rig to my mining operation. So in this last month I've also learned quite a bit about GPU mining and that's what today's video is going to be about. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys the top five things I've learned in the last month of mining Ravencoin. So if you find that information to be interesting, as always, do please hit the like button for me, subscribe to the channel for more Ravencoin and cryptocurrency content, and hit the bell to notify yourself when my next video comes out. And without further delay, let's get right into it. The top five things I've learned while mining Ravencoin. So the first thing that I've learned, and probably the most important, is how to properly distribute the power through the mining rig. And the reason why it's so important is because it's a safety issue, and if you aren't doing it correctly, there's a lot of different ways that this could be a fire hazard. And there's an in-depth video on how to do this through your mining rig on Seb's FinTech channel, which I did put a link of that video down in the description of this video if you want to see something that's very in-depth. But in that video, it talks about things like the 80% rule, where you don't want to push more than 80% of the power that something is rated for through it. So for example, if you have like a 300 watt cord, you don't want to push more than 240 watts through that cord. Also, it talks about how like you can test the different cords by touch, make sure none of them are extremely hot, because if it's extremely hot, again, that could potentially be a fire hazard. So like I said, there is a very detailed video on Seb's FinTech channel, and I did put a link down in the description of this. The second thing that I learned is that Different GPUs will actually mine different coins more or less effectively. For example, this right here is a 1660 Ti, and it will mine Ethereum a little bit better than it will mine Ravencoin, and it's a little bit more profitable on Ethereum at the time of recording this video. However, on my cryptocurrency mining rig, I actually have a bunch of 2080s and some 2080 Ti's and 2080 Supers as well. And if you look on two crypto calc, you can see that the 2080 is actually more profitable on Ravencoin than it is currently on Ethereum. So when you're deciding to mine a cryptocurrency, I think it's always important to check how profitable each GPU you're putting on your stack is for the coin that you're intending to mine. The third thing that I've learned is that even if you have two GPUs that are exactly the same, as far as these are both 1660 Ti's, and they could even be the same brand, it doesn't mean that at the exact same power and the exact same memory, they are going to give you the exact same hash rates. And that brings me into the fourth thing that I've learned, and that is how to be able to actually modify the power and the memory and the core clock on all of the different GPUs in MSI Afterburners. And there's also a very detailed video on Seb's FinTech channel as well on how to do both AMD and also NVIDIA cards. But essentially what you do is you go into MSI Afterburners and you're able to modify the power, you're able to modify the memory clock and also the core clock in order to be able to get the best performance and the best efficiency out of whatever graphics card it is that you're using. And I want to make it clear that this final thing is not financial advice, this is just my personal opinion, but I personally don't think that anybody really knows what's going to happen to cryptocurrency GPU mining after the proof of stake Ethereum merger. And a lot of people are saying that it's going to die, and I personally think that that's why a lot of people are selling their GPU equipment, and why the price of it has gone down tremendously. But in my opinion, I'm somebody who likes to go against the grain, and I think that cryptocurrency is still in a speculative position as far as an asset class is concerned. And right now, we don't know what is going to be the number one cryptocurrency to win the day. So, I think that right now it makes sense to be accumulating a bunch of different cryptocurrencies still, and I do think that all of the coins that are currently being mined do have the potential to go up in the future if all of the prices of crypto go up in the future. So again, like I said, that is not financial advice. That is just my personal opinion. But that is the reason why I personally have been picking up GPU mining equipment because right now it is tremendously less expensive than it was six months to a year ago. So if all the cryptocurrency that I've been mining right now goes up in value, which I do personally think that it will, then all of the equipment will more than pay for itself. So guys, those are the top five things that I've learned in my first month of mining Ravencoin. If you found the information to be helpful, as always, do please hit the like button for me. 
subscribe to the channel for more cryptocurrency and Ravencoin content, and hit the bell to notify yourself when my next video comes out. And also follow me over on Twitter as well as over on TikTok in order to see more of my content as well as to stay more connected. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys in the next Critical Crypto.